How's it going Eliminators? Today we're going to be working on a 5 horsepower Craftsman Rototiller that's got a Tecumseh HS50 engine on it. So let's get right into it. It starts first pull and it runs, but if we go over to the fuel shutoff valve and we turn that to the on position, you're going to notice that the carburetor starts to drip. See that? But this thing does fire up and run and I can show you guys that. So I'm going to have to look at the recoil here. Could be a case of just needing a little bit of lubrication, but if I give it a pull, there we go. Then it goes back in. So this is a fairly simple design. I'm going to come down here with a slotted screwdriver, remove the screws so that I can take off the air filter cover, and then we'll go ahead and have a look at that air filter. And with those screws removed, we now have access at our air filter here. You could blow it out if you wanted to to save yourself a little bit of money. Looks like it's an OEM Tecumseh filter, part number 30727. And with the air filter off, it now exposes the two number two Phillips screws. So I'm going to go ahead and remove the air filter backing plate. You don't have to, but I'm going to just to make it easier for cleaning the carburetor and whatnot. Now, if you're not familiar with these types of engines, then what you should do now is go ahead and take a picture of your throttle linkage and which hole on the throttle itself that it's connected to. Because when you go to reconnect that, if you're not sure and you put it in the wrong hole, your engine's going to run slightly different, as well as sometimes the governor arm here will have different holes for your linkage to go in. So just kind of either take a picture or a mental note. But the next thing we're gonna do now is remove the fuel line clamp back off the fuel line. There is a shutoff valve on this one and the fuel line looks like it's fairly new. So I don't have to replace that. You guys can see that the fuel line clamp because they used a red one instead of a green one has actually deformed the fuel line a little bit. So when we go to reinstall this one, we're gonna use the same one and I'm gonna make sure that I line up that little oval there with that because what'll happen is if you guys put this in a different location, it won't put as much tension on the fuel line as it did when it was in this location. So it's a good time to note that you always wanna use the proper fuel line clamps. So in this case, it would have been a green because a green is slightly larger than the reds. And to back off the fuel line, I use just a little pair of needle nose pliers. They're super small and you just kinda walk it out just like this but that's backed off far enough that I should be able to pull that fuel line off now there is a tool that is made here and this is a fuel line remover you guys can see it's got a little groove cut into it and you're supposed to go in and back the fuel line off something like this but I find that when the fuel line is up tight against the fuel inlet because this is a lot thicker even though it's a wedge it is a lot thicker compared to my little needle nose pliers here so I tend to use those to go in and just back off the line a little bit. Makes things a little easier. And using a 7 16 open end wrench, I'm able to go in here and back off these carburetor mounting nuts. There's not a lot of room, but they give you just enough. Notice that when I move the nut there, the stud also moves with it. So there's gonna be a bolt that goes all the way through here. Okay, so the head of that bolt there is a 3 8 so I'm just gonna use a wrench and go ahead and back off that nut the rest of the way. Now additionally, if you don't wanna remove it this way, you can just go ahead and use number three Phillips screwdriver and remove those two screws there. And then you can go ahead and remove the intake manifold with the carburetor and then just go ahead and disassemble it on your workbench. But because this thing ran good, I'm not gonna be removing that because then I create extra work for myself and I have to use gaskets that I wouldn't have to use if I don't remove that. And just like that, we can go ahead and remove our carburetor and I'm just gonna go ahead and remove the linkage from the governor arm just so that doesn't fall. Okay, so because I shut the fuel valve off and then ran this dry, there's not a lot of fuel inside of this. I'm gonna go ahead and start by removing the bowl here and we can do that by removing the bowl nut. And to do that, I'm just gonna go ahead and use my 7 16 wrench. So once you get that off, you can go ahead and remove the bowl. And the bowl will give you a good idea of what's in the carburetor and we can see not too much. One little piece of fine debris in there. But for the most part, this carburetor looks very clean. So it might have been cleaned recently, but we'll go ahead and pull the float pin here. We'll go ahead and remove the float. And on this carburetor, we can see it has the metal needle valve, which means that it has a rubber seat inside of there. So I'm gonna go ahead and use one of my pick tools and I'm gonna rip that thing out of there and we're gonna get a new one in there. So this is my pick tool here and I Bought this, I believe, at Princess Auto. It has an aluminum handle with a little diamond texture to it, so 
It's like a non-slip grip. I think that's called knurling. Anyways, these little tips here thread in and out and you guys can see that that one has a slight little bend to it. And then there's a pack here and it's got some straight ones, some hooked ones and some other angled ones there. But I think I bought this at Princess Auto, but it's very good for going in and using that little edge there to go in and pull out the old seat. It's fairly simple. So I'm gonna go ahead and rip that out and I can get a new one in there after I clean this carburetor. And just like that, the little rubber seat there pops right out so we can go ahead and have a little inspection of that. It's just a little rubber seat and it's gonna have an edge on that side. That's the bottom side and that right there is the top side. Now the next thing I'm gonna do here is remove the air fuel mixture screw but before I remove it I'm going to go ahead and thread it in and count how many turns it goes in and then I'll know that when I remove it and put it back in to thread it all the way in and then back it out the same amount of turns because again, this thing ran perfectly, but I'm gonna go ahead and clean this anyways because it's off and I might as well. Okay, so the air fuel mixture screw there was set at one and a quarter turns. And you guys are just gonna wanna be careful that there's gonna be a brass washer and then there's gonna be a rubber O-ring behind that. That's what makes the seal so that fuel doesn't leak out of there. So you can either pull that out and then go ahead and replace that O-ring or leave it in there. Like I said, I'm gonna go ahead and throw this in my ultrasonic cleaner. If you guys don't have an ultrasonic cleaner, you can use carb cleaner. And if you have one, I would highly suggest using an air compressor. Go ahead and blow out your main jet there. If you guys wanna see how a carburetor works, you can go ahead and click the link in the top right of your screen. I'll link it for you now. I did a full video explaining how a basic lawnmower carburetor works, so you guys can check that out if you'd like. I'm gonna be using a Stenz 525-212. It's a float valve kit, and it replaces a Tecumseh 631-021 or a 021A or a 021B. Okay, so I have a new seat that I'm gonna be popping in here. Now, what I'm gonna do is take a little bit of three-in-one oil, put it in there just to I guess lubricate the sides of it. Then I have a drift pin here that you guys can see I've filed down the edges. And this is good enough to go in and kind of press down on that seat. And once again, guys, you wanna put that little groove to the bottom. And then I kind of just go around and make sure that's depressed all the way. So these types of inlets I don't like at all because of this reason they do leak. So what I've done here is uh, taken my carburetor and put it into a woodworking vise. A woodworking vise is awesome because the wood on the vise won't damage the aluminum. You can tighten it right up and the wood will deform and squeeze that carburetor in there. Okay, so what I have here is a set of easy outs and these are used to remove a bolt that has a stripped head on it. So you guys can see they have teeth cut into them and they're meant to spin in reverse, so they grab in reverse. So what I've done is I've taken my Easy Out, I've put it onto my impact driver, I've come up here and I've snapped off the plastic 90 degree and I'm using my impact driver to slowly back that out and it's actually working quite well. And I've got it to the point where I can loosen it off using just a pair of locking pliers here. And just to double check that my needle valve is holding PSI, I've put my float back in and you guys can see that it is in fact holding. So I know for a fact that the new needle valve and seat is sealing up. So I'm assuming from the factory they have a tool and they probably go from here on this side of the carburetor and they press those in using a hydraulic press. So they're just pressure fit. If I can buy a new one of these, then I'll see if I can get just a metal one and then I'll put some pipe dope on there and maybe I'll use a vise to press that in and we'll just go pressure fit again and we'll see if that works. The needle inlet for this carburetor, the part number is a Tecumseh 631807 and I'm looking on eBay and I think it runs like $9, believe it or not. So it's been about a week and I finally got my part in. So we were able to find a parts store that's a few towns away. So it's a little bit farther away. I don't normally buy parts there and it was $12.99. So this little guy right here is about half the price of a replacement carburetor, believe it or not. But this is the plastic swivel one. So I'm gonna pull this out and I'm gonna show you guys how to install it inside of a carburetor like this. So I got a little bit of seal all here. This stuff is an automotive contact adhesive, and you guys can see here it is gas and oil resistant. And I'm gonna put it onto this area here, and then I'm gonna go ahead and take a C-clamp here, and we're gonna use a C-clamp to press this in, and then this carburetor will be ready to go. Now, I don't need much here. I'm just gonna take a little dab, and then I'll just 
wrap it around with my Q-tip there. So what I'm doing here is I'm just getting my C-clamp in place and I've just gone ahead and double checked that the position is correct and I'm just going to go ahead and start threading in my C-clamp here and we're going to get it pressed in. So I'm just threading it nice and slow. You guys can see that we are closing that gap. You just want to make sure that your C-clamp is nice and flat on that edge. So you want to be pressing on there because this is plastic and it can break. Additionally, if you need a little bit more leverage, you can go ahead and use a little pipe on the end of that and we're almost there. Okay, so this is as far as I've been able to get it in. There's, I'm going to say, maybe a sixteenth of an inch there. And that's as far as I can get it to go. I don't want to push it any farther because I don't want to break the plastic because that would be really unfortunate. So you guys can see that because I've chosen to use a little bit of seal all, the seal all, you guys can see it's wet in between the inlet and the carburetor. That's going to seal that little gap there. That's going to prevent any fuel from leaking out and it is oil and gas resistant. So I'm just going to let this cure for maybe five or 10 minutes and then I'll go ahead and pressure test it because what I don't want to do is pressure test it now and blow out some of that seal all in there. Okay, so I have my carburetor held upside down here. I've wet the needle valve with a little bit of 3-in-1 oil. I have my carburetor pressure tester tool hooked up. We are sitting at approximately 2.5 PSI and we are holding. It is not leaking. So this carburetor seals up and it's ready to be reinstalled onto the machine. So first things first, I got my carburetor backing plate installed onto my carburetor. Next up, I'm hooking up my throttle linkage to the same hole that we removed it from. And I'm just gonna go ahead and pop that onto the governor arm, and then I'll go ahead and slide this on and get the nuts onto the carburetor mounting bolts. And again, just using a 3 8 wrench for the bolt and a 7 16 for the nut. And because the fuel inlet is adjustable, you can just simply turn that out of the way and get your wrench in there. I'll get my fuel line hooked up next. Now, before I go ahead and install my air filter, I did blow it out with my compressor. This air filter is good, so I'm not going to be replacing it. It'll save my customer a little bit of money. But I went ahead and ordered a couple of Stens 100 008. That's a Stens air filter that replaces the Tecumseh 30727, and it fits all of these models including the H and the HS50, which it doesn't list there, but it says 2.5 to 8 horsepower engine. So that, you guys can see, it's a little different. This is a Stens aftermarket air filter, and that is an OEM one. They're more expensive, but I'm going to go ahead, pop that back in with those two standard slotted screws. Okay, so the moment of truth. Even though I've pressure tested this carburetor, I'm going to go ahead, turn on the fuel valve, and we're going to see if there is a fuel leak. And you guys can see that it's not leaking. So this carburetor is sealed up and I'm going to wheel this thing outside, fire it up, see how it runs, make an adjustment to the carburetor if I have to, but I don't think I'll have to because this thing ran perfect before. So let's see how it runs. So that's it guys, this engine runs great. The fuel inlet here seals up nicely. It doesn't leak anymore. So this is a job well done. Eventually we might pull that shroud and have a look at lubricating the ball bearings inside of this recoil here. But you guys can see that they've riveted this recoil housing on, which means that you have to remove the shroud to get at the inside of that recoil. Not that big of a job, but maybe a little time consuming. So because it works right now and the vibration from the engine pulls the recoil back in, I'm not gonna worry about it just yet. I can get this back to my customer so that he can use it to clean up his garden. Well, that's it for today's video, guys. We were able to get that carburetor on the Tecumseh HS50 fully rebuilt, and we were able to successfully replace the plastic fuel inlet. If you guys enjoyed the video, think about leaving me a thumbs up. You can click here to subscribe and click over here to watch one of my previous videos. I upload every single week, so be sure to stop on by next week. Check the channel out for new content. And as always, guys, thanks for watching.